Welcome to ProAmp Solutions. Today we have a Blues Junior in and this is a cream board and what I wanted to talk about today I know there's already been a lot said and documented about this but uh, you're gonna learn my approach to it so this is a uh, stock Blues Junior that has been came in for service but it's been serviced once before uh, I can tell because as usual with these, uh, the uh, board uh, that the tubes are on, uh, sp specifically the power tube section, has been damaged by heat. Uh, traces uh, have been hand wired uh, to repair it in this particular uh, case on the previous repair. So we're going to talk today about the Blues Junior, and we're going to I'm going to put things in two different categories. One would be uh, reliability and in hardening so to speak. So if you want your amp to be uh, reliable uh, from a maintenance perspective there's sort of good better best in in my mind. So we'll talk about those things today and then uh, I'll show you this one we're gonna do a sound test on this one and I'll show you what it sounds like when it came in just right now before I do any work on it and then we're gonna go through recapping this amp um, putting an adjustable bias in this amp and then doing a, a series of small modifications but they'll yield a big difference so I'm gonna talk through those the reason behind them the rationale so let's get started let's do uh, sound test and let's hear the amp. I have everything at noon straight up except for um, the uh, master volume. So this is this is how it came in the shop. Okay, so uh, I will, uh, the next thing that I am going to do to prepare for this, I'm going to lay it down and adjust the camera so that we can focus on the circuit board. And then I'll regroup, we'll come back, we'll talk through this, we're going to break down the modifications and the changes in the rationale. So uh, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back, and this amp came in uh, for service, uh, noisy and some intermittent um, change in the reverb and kind of ice picky. Uh, so I did the initial uh, play test for you. So as usual, we'll do the initial observations on this amp because it needs service, but we're also going to do a wave of modifications to it. So the first thing I noticed I wanted to show you is the ground pin uh, has been removed from this cable. So we're going to replace the power cable. Uh, one of the most common issues is the filter caps uh, leaking uh, and going bad. And I can already see this one is crusty in this area. This one is crusty. You can see a little bit of electrolyte has already you know spilled out there. And then this filter cap is on the uh, plus and these two well, actually all four of these are part of the plus and minus 15 volt power supply filtration for the op amp that drives the reverb pan and this one is bulging at the top you can see that this one is has popped out so that's going to be another reason for some of his issues just things you can see on initial inspection so let's talk about uh, oh the other thing is I have tested all of these tubes the power tubes test uh, great this uh, preamp tube tests great these two are weak they're only about 70 percent of what their dissipation should be so I'm going to replace these two tubes as a part of the service so I'm going to put um, in terms of this amp with common problems, I'm going to put it in sort of three categories. What I would call a stage one, a stage two, 
and a stage three. Stage one is what I consider really essential. It's going to be inevitable and it's going to um, give you longevity uh, in the amplifier. So these are most notorious for over dissipating the power tubes, uh, running them too hot, and you can already see uh, this heat damage here. And I don't have it up where you can see it, but this amp has been serviced once before because two of the traces have literally been melted away uh, with heat and they've been replaced with wire leads from the tube pins uh, to join where these uh, headers uh, come through. Not ideal, uh, but that's the current state of this amp. So what I consider stage one is replacing the filter caps. That's essential. And in this case, this is a cream board. Uh, so R52, I'm going to replace with a 50K 10 turn pot and make the fixed bias adjustable so that we can dial these power tubes right in exactly where we want them. I've serviced about 10 of these over the last couple months. 100% of them are over dissipating, anywhere from 120 to 150%, every stinking one of them. So um, if you haven't cooked your board, you will. <laughs> so uh, that, that is sort of the, the stage one. Filter caps, making the fixed bias adjustable. The thing that's a little more subjective that would be a judgment call is if your PCB board is not cooked yet, if you don't have damage there, I would, if you do the stage one with the filter caps and the adjustable fixed bias, then it would be okay. You don't have to really worry about it. It's not going to damage it due to over dissipation. If the board is already damaged, like this one is, with traces gone, wire leads uh, coming over, uh, to these headers, then I would recommend replacing the whole PC. And there's aftermarket PCs available, two millimeters uh, thickness, uh, through hole plated holes, uh, kind of the full gambit in terms of reliability there. So that's more of a judgment call, but that's what I consider stage one sort of essential uh, on this amp. The stage two, uh, what I would consider for like road harding reliability is the speaker jack is notorious for uh, going bad or coming loose uh, with road travel. I would recommend actually completely replacing this cable, soldering it in on the speaker side, and uh, using a good Nutrick or, or Switchcraft uh, type connector uh, here with a better cable. So that would be part of what I consider stage two soldering it in place, replacing this. And the other thing I would consider stage two is replacing the input jack. So the housings on these are fairly weak and they're notorious for cracking, breaking. Um, so the solution here is just to remove this from the PCB, put a nice switchcraft quarter inch jack in there, and then uh, wire, you know, hand wire it into the board. So that would be the stage two the speaker wire um, and the input jack. Stage three really is if you haven't replaced this PCB, even if it hasn't been cooked, that's what I would consider stage three. Replacing this PCB with a high quality one that has thicker copper plating, through hole plated, uh, etc., etc. Because just changing tubes uh, this board is really uh, fragile. So just in general, working on this amp, you have to be extraordinarily conscientious of your soldering iron dwell time uh, and the heat that you're using. Uh, this uh, PCB board here is single-sided. It's not through-hole plated. The copper is very thin. And um, just in trying to service or reflow some of these tubes, it's really easy just to, to lift a pad right off and lose your mechanical connection. Uh, so th that's what I would consider maintenance and hardening. So that, that's that. Now let's talk about voicing the amp. I would put that into uh, three main categories also. 
So what I would consider, and I'm going to put these in, in terms of what I consider most impactful to a uh, little more subtle but nice to have. So if you want to make a difference in your Blues Junior, what I would consider stage one, when you recap this amp, instead of putting a 47 UF cap here, put a 100 uh, UF cap here. It'll tighten it up a little bit, be a little bit less flubby and change the speaker. Uh, there's several, you know, I could recommend. I've used uh, some Scumback speakers that I've really liked. The Greenback sounds really good in this amp. Uh, a Vintage Celestian sounds really good in this amp. Uh, some Eminent speakers sound really good in this amp. A little more subjective, but if you change the speaker and put a 100 UF filter cap here, that can be done with a Stage 1 in terms of maintenance at the same time and of course you know you can change the speaker out so those are relative it's relatively low hanging fruit and very impactful what i would consider stage two would be changing the coupling caps which in this board is c2 here and c8 right now these are 0.0022s and i would change these to 0.022s so change the coupling caps the second thing I would do is I'm going to put a silver mica 250 puff here. I'm going to change C6 to a 100 nanofarad um, in the tone stack. And I'm going to change, uh, let's see here, the R11 to an 82K. So we're going to change the characteristics of the tone stack. Basically, this tone stack was sort of mimicked after uh, the Marshall, but it's not... Uh, following a cathode follower like in the Marshall so it has some different characteristics which I don't care for uh, I think that the scoop is at, at too high of a frequency and I think the response in some of the controls is a little too subtle so we're going to make a more prominent put that mid scoop where it should be uh, and give it a, a little bit more mid um, than it has right now so there's subtle changes but a few subtle changes added up really make a difference the other thing is this amp i don't think it gains up real smoothly uh, and so we're going to change uh, the first bypass cap from 47 uf to 1 uf so those three changes are what i would consider the stage two changing a couple components in the tone stack changing the coupling caps and changing the first the value of the first bypass cap um, the last change, which I would consider stage three, has to do uh, with the reverb tank. This, this particular amp, the reverb sounds just horrific. It's ice picky, shrilly, just terrible. Um, one of the things I noticed, this tank is like, it has no give. It's rock hard. Uh, the mounting grommets have hardened. It's just rock hard onto the bottom of the cabinet. Um, and a tank change uh, also helps. So I'm going to do what I would consider my stage three. I'm actually going to change this op amp um, to one that can provide a lot more current. One of the weaknesses of this circuit is they have to gain up the input and really gain up the return on the op amp uh, to be able to really have this function. So I'm going to change the op amp Put, provide more current drive on the front side then we're going to reduce the gain on the back side and we're going to remove the uh, treble uh, bleed on it so basically stage three is all about the reverb I'm going to change the tank change how it's mounted change um, the op amp change uh, I believe it's R44 uh, which sets the gain in the recovery stage and then we're going to take out um, the treble bleed uh, on the 50k pot for that so that would be my stage three and then of course tubes you can voice an amp a little bit by by changing the tubes but again in order of preference and impact stage one 100 uf here change the speaker stage two coupling caps tone stack and this bypass cap stage three is really dealing uh, with the reverb circuit on this. 
this particular amp, um, the customer doesn't want to change uh, this board right now, but I am going to do all of those mods to this amp with the exception of changing the speaker and changing this board and changing the jack. So, you know, based on budget and constraints and what people want to do, uh, it's, it's their amp and the customer comes first. Uh, just give them uh, good advice and let them make the decision. But uh, this particular amp, uh, of everything I've discussed, the only thing that's not going to happen is the jack's not going to get changed, the PCB's not going to get changed, and the speaker's not going to get changed. But we're going to uh, do the filtration cap, bypass caps, tone stack, uh, reverb. And we'll walk through uh, each one of those as I do it. So this amp came in, uh, again, it needed service. So it's really, if the board has to come out and be removed to change the filter caps, doing the rest of this is relatively low hanging fruit. It's not that much incremental uh, effort. It takes some skill. The board is a little delicate, you know, clearing the holes, etc. But um, if you're going to change the filter caps and make the fixed bias adjustable and the board's already laying over, that's sort of the time. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do all this in, in one pass. So the first thing I'm going to, to do is make sure that there's no voltage on these caps. And then the way I like to do it is uh, I actually clip uh, the lead on one side of these because of the silicon. And then I gently take a flat blade screwdriver and I pry it up so that the cap is uh, mechanically free. And then I heat the leads from the other side and remove it. So, and then these radials I work out and then uh, clean the, the holes on. So this particular amp, I'm going to replace all of the electrolytics. They'll all be stock values except for this one uh, and this one. So... I'm going to get to that, so I'll get the, I'm not going to bore you with getting the board down. I'll get the board down, and I'll get all of the, uh, uh, basically, I'll do this cap removal, and then we'll take a look at the board in all of those locations of the cap. So basically, I'm going to clear the board, and then we'll come back and, and rejoin as we uh, do the upgrades. Okay, just real quick, I wanted to come back and show you how I remove these electrolytic caps. And the first thing I do, like I said, is I, I snip basically all these positive lids and lift them. But I wanted to show you the leakage uh, that you can visibly uh, see here on these capacitors. So once I get these out, I'm going to clean up this silicone. And when we put in the new caps, you know, of course, we'll put fresh silicone down. But... Uh, after I get these removed, uh, I got a little cleanup uh, to do in this area. But I just wanted to show you uh, visually uh, what you could see uh, in this amp, in addition to the top of this cap here being blown off. Okay, I'm back. I've got uh, components removed, and I also learned a few things on the back side of the board. Uh, I've already cleaned up some of it, but I left some of it so that I could uh, show you. So when this amp was serviced uh, prior to coming in by someone else, you can see uh, that the input jack has been reflowed by the solder flux there. You can see uh, these pots, a few of them, have been uh, reflowed. And the other thing was that this location, that filter cap uh, that had the top expanded, uh, blown out, that had already been replaced. Uh, there was fresh solder and rosin here. So I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. And then C6 and the tone stack had been replaced before. And you can see that the, that pad was lifted and there's a repair you know to join that in the trace there so i did want to talk about 
uh, my technique because I think it will be helpful. Uh, as I, I just want to reiterate, this is a single-sided board. The holes are not through-plated, and you have to be really careful with your dwell time. And if you notice, a lot of these leads are you know bent over pretty hard uh, where they're soldered, which can cause friction during removal. So that's why what I was telling you on the main filter caps on the other side, I cut them, free them mechanically. That way, when I heat up the, the hole, in the, in, this is the 47 UF, when I heat that up, I can rotate it so that it just comes out nice and smooth and clean. Same with the other lead. And uh, this is the size solder tip that I use. You can see how fine and small it is uh, so that when I heat a pad, I don't stay on it long. Uh, and I'm not using a lot of surface area and I get that component out of there and reduce the friction. So uh, when you remove a res so let me go through it. So the first one I did was these two holes here. This was the 47 UF filter cap. We're going to replace that uh, with a 100 UF. This, these three pair of holes here are the 322 UFs and we're gonna put nice F and T caps in there and again very little dwell time just get it out and then where it's bent over you can kind of curl the piece as you as you take it out so that's the main power supply filter caps for the high voltage then for the plus and minus 15 uh, volts you've got this pair and this pair which is the around 26 27 volts plus and minus and then after the zener diodes it's filtered again which is this cap and this cap and again oddly in this one th this one had already been replaced so I'm not sure what happened there or why it was a problem I'll double check uh, that side and the zener and some other things make sure there's nothing else going on there but those are the holes that consist of the power supply rail filter caps. 47 UF, 22, 22, 22. Then you've got these two caps here for the 26 volts and these two caps here for the 15 volts. That takes care of the power supply. This is R52 removed. And when I remove the resistor, I cut one end of it off at the resistor I bend down the resistor and I bend up the remaining part of the lead. So again, I can use that same technique. I can kind of curl them and they come right out without resistance or friction. So that would be what's entailed to do just the stage one, the filtration caps and the bias. Uh, let's move on to uh, the tone stack mods. So that involves uh, these six holes here. So this is the 250 uh, PF. I'm not going to change the value of that, but I don't like the ceramic disc. I'm going to replace it with a silver mica. Then this is the 100K resistor. We're going to replace that with an 82K resistor. And this is C6. I'm going to take a little care. I'm going to remount this a little different than the previous repair was done. I'll show you how I do that. Anyways, this is C6. This is going to be uh, 0.1 or 100 nanofarads there. That's the tone stack changes. Uh, then, moving over this direction, the two coupling caps. Uh, there is one there, and there is one there. And then the 47 UF cathode bypass cap that we're going to change to 1 UF is right here. So that's been removed. Those two have been removed. Then sort of the, the stage three, the reverb, I have removed the op amp. And if you very gently, just on one side of the lead, use solder wick, again, being taking great care with your dwell time and your heat, you can just literally flow the solder right off those legs. And I use the soldering on, I kind of press against the leg so that I can see that it's free. And this op amp just dropped out. So not as intimidating as it might seem. So that's the op amp removed. This is R44 here, which uh, sets the gain for the return stage in that op amp in the feedback loop. And we're going to uh, change this to from 220K to 
uh, K. And then way over here by the reverb pot, this is the treble bypass for the repot, uh, reverb pot. I removed uh, that 0033 and we're going to leave it out. So all of the holes have been uh, cleaned and prepped. I took the silicon off the other side. So basically we're ready to uh, populate the board uh, with the brand new caps. So I'm going to populate the board and we'll uh, put it back in and secure it and uh, do a little bit of testing and we'll we'll rejoin after I've done that. So F and T caps using high quality replacement caps. Uh, so you'll get to see what that looks like as soon as I finish uh, populating it now. So we'll rejoin as soon as I get this populated. Okay, I thought there'd be a little bit of value add if I show you uh, my technique for, you know, I lead form the F and T cap and then I add silicon to the bottom. The other side of the board has been cleaned off. Obviously, you always need to pay attention to the polarity of electrolytic caps. Excuse me while I bend over to slide this in. Okay, so that cap is flush with the board. Bend these slightly. So let me show you. I'm using basically a fairly fine solder and a very fine tip. And again, this board is very fragile. You can lift traces and pins. So watch as I, I flow this. I'm barely using enough heat to melt the solder. Uh, make sure my iron is my iron went into sleep mode excuse me okay so let me get my hat out of the way if you watch this actually use the solder to kind of complete it and then I just pull up so watch this so just enough to melt the solder and then I pull up so that's it that that's how I uh, put the leads in and solder them. It's sort of the least risk method I found out to do it. So you can see how nice the resolder joint looks uh, on these two. So I've got just a few more to go and um, I'll come back and um, show the filter caps uh, completed uh, real quickly. Okay, so I've got the what I've called the stage one complete. The filter caps are uh, installed. And uh, so these are the two here that were for the plus and minus 26 volts. These two for the plus and minus 15. Uh, you can see nice fillets, shiny solder, no cold joints. So that's what it would look like. And those are the whole locations for that stage one. So now I'll go on and do the stage two, uh, which is the tone stack, the coupling caps, and the bypass caps. So we'll do that next. So these six holes constitute the tone stack. Uh, the coupling caps are here, and the bypass cap is there. So that's what we'll do next. I get those done. I'll rejoin. Okay, I'm back and I've got the what I call the stage two done. So this is my repair here and installation of the 0.1 UF uh, base filter capacitor. Uh, this is the new 220 PF silver mica and this is the 82K uh, resistor all implemented there. Then uh, down here and uh, let's see right here and here so the coupling caps are 0.022s now and this first uh, cathode uh, bypass is now 1UF electrolytic so that's the stage 2 so for stage 3 
One is on the reverb pot. We're going to do the treble bleed omit. We're going to change the op amp and we're going to change the gain of the return stage. So that'll be next. I'll talk about that and once that's finished I'll rejoin briefly and then we'll uh, get the board put back in and take a look at the finished changes. Okay, so I finished what I call stage three, which is changing out this op amp and uh, the feedback resistor and the return loop. Uh, this here has been changed to a 120K, and then the op amp is an NJM4556. It's a dual high current op amp, and I'll put that part number down in the description for you. But here is the finished uh, backside of the board. I'll clean up this uh, flux here just a little bit and then we'll get this buttoned back up and take a look at what it looks like finished from the other side. Okay, I've got the board back up and screwed in, but I wanted to talk about a couple things on the top. One is, if this jack uh, remains and it's not changed out, be very careful with it. Uh, the thread pitch is very fine and there's not a lot of thread uh, depth. So I would screw uh, the board in and then just two finger tight. Be very careful. You can cross thread this and you can strip it. So take care with that. The other thing that's a concern uh, these pots are just, you know, mounted directly on the PCB, and they don't have a lot of mechanical strength. It's just their, their leads on that single layer board. But make sure on your knobs that the bushings are all installed. So those bushings help uh, these knobs from uh, uh, going out of center and wobbling and creating extra stress. So if the knobs do not have bushings, make sure you get the bushings and put them on. So that's the note really on the top side on disassembly and reassembly for that matter. And then I'll get this laid down, reposition the camera. We'll look at the finished work on the board and I'll talk about a couple of best practices just in terms of uh, lead dress and things that are helpful if it's sort of your first time or, or you're an enthusiast and you want to do this and you understand the safety procedures and precautions to take. So that's that's uh, the top side. Let me get this laid over and the camera repositioned and we'll rejoin. Okay, this is the <clears throat> completed side of the board now that we've got the board populated and stood back up. So <clears throat> I'll go over locations and values. Uh, one last time. So these are the new F&T filtration caps. Uh, these are stock 22 UF. These are 500 volt 22 UF. This is a 450 volt 100 uh, UF. So this was a value change part of the uh, what I call the stage one. This is my um, adjustable fixed bias assembly board that I make. Um, and so that's where this is installed in place of R52. And then I just uh, uh, put that in and silicone it on the bottom. Beautiful 10 turn pot there. <clears throat> Works fantastic. And the way I do it uh, with folded over leads on this perf board, uh, that anchors those uh, leads. They're looped around so that when you heat it on the other side, it doesn't come loose on this side and then it gives you a nice measuring point on the bottom to measure your bias voltage. So when you turn the amp on, turn it on without power tubes in it, and you can see your negative bias voltage right here uh, with your lead on the chassis and the lead right there, and then turn this counterclockwise uh, to the greatest negative voltage, and then you can um, bias the amp, and I'll sh tell you how I did that. So. Uh, to back up real quick, uh, <clears throat> when you take this board out, a couple of notes of caution. These ribbon cables are a little bit brittle uh, at the connection, so be careful with them. 
and then before you unscrew the board it helps to do a couple things one is I cut the positive leads off of the old filter caps and get them up off the silicon so they're free and then I undo the brown lead and the blue lead it just makes things easier and you don't have to you know put pressure on the board to undo them while the board is kind of loose so I take these two uh, off and then uh, uh, obviously make sure it's discharged I take the all three of these transformer leads I take off because I measure the resistance uh, between the center tap and the brown and the blue uh, that's how I bias this particular amp the other note is you'll have to take um, this uh, snap off board out for the speaker and the foot jack so again on the left side of this is the foot switch so be a little careful with that nut it's just plastic it's easy to strip um, when you when you take it off so in order to get the board out it it helps to remove these and you have to get this out of the way um, the other thing I like to do is I try to clean off the old silicone while the board is still secured that's helpful so that's regarding you know sort of the board removal putting it back in so to jump back in uh, filtration caps and the adjustable fixed bias are basically what I consider essential stage one if it hasn't bit you yet it will um, then uh, stage two uh, has to do with the tone stack the uh, coupling capacitors in the first cathode bypass capacitor so a little hard to see but this here is C6 this is now a 100 nan I put a 250 picofarad uh, silver mica cap it's not a value change just a better cap for the tone stack and then here this is the 82k um, metal film resistor installed in position R11 that's the tone stack then the coupling caps here C2 and C8 are here respectively and those are now 0.022 or 22 nanofarads and then this first electrolytic bypass cap is now 1 UF so that's the stage 2 the stage 3 involves uh, removing this component here it is uh, C23 it's just below the reverb uh, pot here so that's a removal and omission and then I change uh, the op amp uh, here this is a 4556 uh, high current op amp and I change the return feedback loop that sets the gain on the return I change R44 to a 120k uh, metal film so that's sort of my stage one two and three in terms of voicing uh, the amp uh, I would put speaker in in stage one but we did not do that here and then on the hardening uh, we did not do the jack and we did not do the new uh, board here so at this point uh, I have biased it and I'll tell you how I did that and I started the most negative here and my measurement between red and brown was 212.3 uh, ohms so with uh, the tubes installed and the amp running uh, I put a lead between the center tap and here so I could measure my voltage drop and then between the chassis uh, and this same lead here so I could see the plate voltage because bias is a function of the plate voltage uh, times uh, the the millivolts of conductance the milliamps excuse me of conductance uh, that gives you a result and we wanted to end up with 60 percent so the way the math worked out is I had four I dialed uh, the uh, bias here the the potentiometer I turned it clockwise and watched my voltage drop across uh, this half of the output transformer until it reached 4.8 volts. So at 4.8 volts, I had a plate voltage of 323 volts and a drop of 4.8 volts across 212.3 ohms. So the way that math works is you take your 4.8 volts divided by 
0.3 ohms. That's going to give you the current in milliamps times the plate voltage of 323 volts and that's going to give you 60% uh, or about seven and a half uh, watts of dissipation on a 12 watt tube. So uh, I can tell you this particular amp was dissipating at close to 150%. Um, just terrible. Uh, and that's why it suffered that heat damage and those traces in, in this case. So this has uh, the new power cord installed and the work is complete on this. I put a mullard. I moved the tubes around because to voice it. So I replaced two of the tubes, but only half of this second triode uh, is used. So I moved the good tube, which was in the phase inverter position, to the second position, which is just a, a gain stage. I put a Mullard uh, ECC83 in the first gain stages, and I used a Tung Sol 12AX7 in the phase inverter position. So let's stand this thing up, and let's play uh, the same thing through it, same circumstances, and let's listen to the tonal change. Uh, and so let me stand this up, reposition the camera, and I'll be right back for our final sound test. Okay, real quick, before we do the sound test, I neglected to mention, uh, as a part of that stage three, I also change uh, the reverb tank. So uh, this is a mod uh, reverb tank, and it is an 8E... B2C1B. It's a three spring uh, tank. A little bit different layout and orientation construction from the tank that was in here. And uh, the other one was rock solid. If you'll notice, this one I've got a uh, nice play in it. Um, so it's got good spring here. And I've also mounted this on a piece of uh, fairly heavy gauge corrugated cardboard. Uh, and I take great care. I cut it with a razor blade so you don't smash the corrugations. And mounting it on top of cardboard will help dampen it uh, a little bit. So that's my installation method and the rationale uh, for this particular tank. I mean, the reverb difference is night and day. So I'll stand this up now and uh, we'll do that final sound check. Okay, here we go for our final sound test. And I've got this amp in uh, the exact same position. So we're at uh, noon very carefully on every other knob, every knob except for a master, which I'm gonna put just right at, at, at about two here. And I want you to listen to the difference. First off, the noise floor. I mean, it, it just completely changed noise floor. Beautiful. Um, the other thing is I want you to pay very close attention to the clarity and articulation of the amp and also just, well, I'll let you be. I'll let you see, determine what you think. <laughs> Here is a sound demo, all things the same noon, except I have the fat switch engaged. I wanted you to hear a little more gain and how nice it uh, gains up. So here we go. <laughs> 